we've kind of discussed, um, we're kind of a tag team in our medical imaging um, group here. Uh, we're very uh, fluid and very similar in many items. Uh, the MRI though is the new kid on the block, as I often say. Um, MRI has been a has been an imaging modality since the first image was actually in 1970 in the 1970s. Um, ultrasound and, M and X-ray was much earlier than that, especially X-ray. Um, so that's why I say we're the new kid on the block. And also, so there's not as many programs out in the country um, like our MRI program. There are very, very few associate degree um, programs that are entry level. And what does that mean? Just like Chris had said that you can go from radiography to MR. Um, that's one path to become an MRI technologist. In our program, you can go straight to being an MRI technologist. Um, how that's beneficial is that um, they you won't have the employer doesn't have to cross train you um, so that because that's uh, usually a pretty good expense on the employer so um, by having our program you can go directly into MRI if that is your passion so I'm going to talk about a little bit about the profession at first here so what is exactly an MRI? It stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So what we have in our equipment is a strong magnetic field. We also incorporate radio waves, radio frequency waves. We have gradient uh, magnetic fields. And this is to assess both or interpret, create images on both anatomical and physiological information of the human body. So the MRI um, exam, the patient experience, this is a little bit about um, if you've never had an MRI, we do have, uh, this is an MRI machine. Um, patients tend to be very um, anxious when they have an MRI, um, mostly because the machine is relatively small or it's smaller, um, more confined. Um, and that is very difficult for some people. Other reasons are it is more of an advanced um, imaging. Usually that means that you'll have another test first and then they'll recommend an MRI. Not all the time, but many a times um, they'll start with an x-ray and then you'll have the MRI as a patient. So they know something's already going on, they don't know what and they don't feel good. So that always makes people more anxious. And this is a little video on how for a patient to prepare for an MRI, just that way you can understand how the patient feels. Um, we'll go ahead and go through that. And it can be played again probably another time. Another item with an MRI, um, and this is what it would sound like. I hope it plays for you all. I'm hoping you can hear that. It's an MRI is a very noisy machine. So that also carries some um, degree anxiety for patients. And it goes through all these different sounds. It doesn't do them all, all the time. Some, some are much quieter than others, um, but it does make noise consistently, which is really different. Um, again, like I said, that could cause some anxiety for some patients. So being a technologist, we will get into that here shortly. Um, uh, we're really there to comfort the patient, help them get through um, the exam. Here's some beautiful pictures of MRI exams. Um, these are from our um, book of images, so to say, in our lab. Um, these are some beautiful pictures. A lot of times we're imaging um, what, the, what the body looks like and the bright signal tends to be water. So we have here a front view of an abdomen. The nice thing is you set up these abdominal pictures and you get gorgeous pictures that it looks like you're looking right at the anatomy. 
these are very clear. And what's you really unique about MRI is that we never have to reposition the patient. They're always laying in one spot and we can take pictures in all three dimensions of the body. Um, here's the image of the brain, right in the center of the brain. And these are the, if you're familiar with the anatomy at all, those are some ventricles and um, the grooves of the brain, so to say, over here along the edge. Um, the one right below it is a side picture. If you could take your body and cut it down from the top, down to the bottom, from side to side, this would be the picture right in the center. I always like to point out here, here's the nose, um, the lips, and this is the tongue. This would be the brain and the beginning of the, of the neck and the cervical spine. So we can really create gorgeous pictures for the patient to really help aid in their diagnosis. Um, and that's all a kind of a technologist skill on how to manipulate our parameters to get these type of images. This one, uh, to finish up the look at my pictures, this is of the lower spine, the lumbar spine area, the lower back. A lot of people have um, problems in their lower back. So they'll be looking for anything that's, you know, blocking that canal. The white is the spinal fluid in the canal. And they're just looking for anything impinging on that. Same with this, this is um, on the bottom left here, pictures of the cervical spine and the upper thoracic spine, and actually even the base of the head. And they, they like to see that nice long cord going down. That's a shade of gray here. So again, and we can image side to side, front to back, head to foot, and all the planes of the body. Um, and then this lastly is the knee. Notice right up here front is your kneecap. And then there's some extra fluid in there. Maybe they had a little bone bruise here. Um, but those are the type of images that will help diagnose what's going on with the patient. So what does an MRI technologist do? Um, this is a description, it's from the ASRT. Um, that is a um, society for radiologic technologists. But this is their brief description of what uh, MRI technologist does. Um, they play an important role in diag diagnosing disease and injury. During MRI, the frequency resonance, um, resonant frequency properties are atoms are used within a magnetic field to image anatomic or physiological condition of the body. So we acquire the images, just like the other modalities, we acquire the images and we send them on to a radiologist. That's a physician that reviews the images and then reads and gives a most probable diagnosis by looking at the images. Um, we support the patient with a lot of um, communication, a lot of comfort, most technologists, we um, can be very, should be very empathetic, understanding, patient, and sometimes that is very difficult because there's a lot going on in every medical imaging department, and you, you have a person that you're trying to work with, and they have something that's coming from the emergency room, and that's kind of just all, all of healthcare is like that. Um, that's what we as technologists do. You can see our technologists sitting outside in the control area, working on the computer interfacing with the computer to tell the computer how to take those pictures that they're wanting. Sorry. Um, pause. So, we often worry about safety in MRI. This is, um, it's, it's something we always are concerned about because the magnetic field, um, is always on. It's not on and off. It's, there's not a switch. Um, it is always on. And these magnetic fields are very, very powerful. The equipment that we're using in, in the clinical field, it could actually, in a junkyard, pick up a car. It is that strong. So we have to be very aware of how, what's going into that field. And that is another um, responsibility as a technologist that we take very seriously. So just as this little uh, bold statement said, did you know a paperclip can travel at 40 miles an hour into an MRI machine? 
And if you have a patient laying in there, um, they probably won't get hurt, but if it gets just in the right uh, crevice, maybe up the nose, they could possibly be hurt. We'll go back here. So MRI technologists are taught safety extensively. So what else do our classes deal with? We discuss in physics, we discuss magnetic fields, radio frequencies, gradient coils. Um, in anatomy physiology courses, we talk about then the body in three-dimensional views. We spend a lot of time on recognizing anatomy, knowing what it is, and um, imaging that anatomy. So what do we do when we set the computer? We adjust parameters is what we call them. Just kind of like, almost like you're at a, uh, you ever seen a radio station? They have all those or a sounding uh, recording studio and they have all those dials and gears. Uh, we have similar items that we're adjusting and tweaking all the time to get that best quality image. So uh, also we are trained in patient care skills, venipuncture, um, communication. So that's all part of our training skills. So current salary listed by Glassdoor. Um, I put this little hyperlink in here. So hopefully, hopefully it is reflective as of today. Of course, I just made this like a week and a half ago. So it probably is not um, going to be too much different. Hopefully this will be able to open. So where do MRI technology get jobs? They get jobs in hospitals, specialized clinics, um, very um, heavily in orthopedics and MRI. We do a lot of imaging of the musculoskeletal system and the neural, um, the neural system. So the brain, brain the spine, um, those are our heavy items that we image. They can also get um, jobs at eight outpatient centers. You can also be a traveling technologist, sales, um, also, after you become seasoned a little bit, there's also education jobs as what I'm in. Um, so there is a vast opportunity for technologists to get a job. For job advancement, a lot of technologists may become the lead technologist, the MRI department manager, maybe even the radiology manager or the medical imaging department manager. Um, those might be some areas that they advance to. Um, another off, offshoot of that would be the PAX administrator. Um, pretty much all that would be open to all of the medical imaging modalities would have that ability to um, see that, to be that, I'm sorry. Ah! So the day in the life of a technologist, we operate the MRI machine, of course. Obtain quality images and assess patients for MRI safety. Communicate pa with patients and radiologists. This also includes physicians, nurses, um, pretty much all of, all of the hospital, um, whoever with dealing with the patients. Um, we need to understand protocols needed so we're not gonna run the same type of images for a knee as we would a brain. Um, and we need to understand the parameters of why we're choosing what we're choosing to optimize those images. Be able to lift patients and coils utilized in MRI. Um, the coil is actually what receives the information from the body. So we're all the time moving equipment from the, the uh, usually, almost like a bookshelf, um, an enlarged bookshelf storage unit and moving it to the table. That's usually placed right in that MRI unit area. Be able to inject contrast material. Although we have a high volume of, of exams that do have contrast, um, probably well over 50%. And depending on where you work, it could be higher than that. We have to 
a day in our life also includes follow follow the orders that the physicians um, have ordered on the patient. Assess those physician orders just to make sure it all makes sense. You're the double, the second check, the third check maybe even on those physician orders. So we have to be really attentive to detail. We'll also schedule exams, obtain patient history to convey that on to the radiologist, which is a real important um, part of our So what do I personally like best about MRI? MRI can show very detailed images of the anatomy of the human body. It's actually based on hydrogen atoms, which is very different than the, than the other imaging modalities. A hydrogen atom is like a little magnet and it, that's what creates our images. Of course, you know, most of our body is water um, so we have a lot of water in there and also the hydrogen and fat is also what shows up nice and bright for us. Um, MRI can pick up things that other imaging studies cannot. We're talking about very, very thin slices MRI can do. Um, one millimeter thickness on our images. That is pretty, pretty small. Um, MRI does not use radiation. Um, MRI pay is very good considering it's a two-year degree. Um, there's potentials for advancement. MRI allows an individual to have direct patient care. MRI is continually changing and new advances are coming. Every day they're improving MRI and making it better, making it more patient comfort, making it faster. Um, it is computer-based and you know how fast computers change um, and it just, it's changing all the time. Here I have a little overview of our program. Are we past our time, Amber? Um, if you want, I can send this in uh, or the link because I'm not sure if the audio will work anyway. Okay. All right, so we'll go on. Um, it was just a little thing that, and this shows our lab is what's nice. Um, we do have a very, very unique lab. I hate to take this out, um, but here is a picture of it. Sorry. So this is a, our background um, of the MRI unit that we have in our lab. It is truly unique across the country. I don't wanna say it's one of a kind because that's a pretty high standard to meet to make sure that, because um, the world is changing every day, but it is unique as it is a simulation lab, but it is a full size simulation lab. Most of the time, um, students have to go to a hospital and work on a real machine. Um, the the down sounds like it would be great, but the downside of that is you can only go in when it's available. So a lot of times you're talking about a late second shift, meaning like 8 to 11 maybe if you want to do some work because they want their machine to make money first. Um, here at Owens, we, are, we have this beautiful lab. We can teach our students in a controlled environment. We, it's as real as it can be. We treat it as if it is a, um, it actually has a magnetic field. It has everything but the magnetic field. Um, we cannot create images, but we have a, a ton of images loaded into our computer system that allows the students to practice setting up exams on, that, on those computers. Down here at the bottom, this is a little question and answer that that our student here was why she described why she chose Owens MRI program, and that's a little question and answer that can also be found on the Owens web page. So. Here is my name, information, and um, if you'd like to get a hold of me, most of the times right now I am remote, so my cell phone is the best contact method plus my email address. Um, once we return to campus full time, um, I can be located in Bicentennial Hall 172. Thank you very much.